Hey guys, I'm going to make a quick tutorial on how I use PicMonkey to create uh, recognition and new coach welcomes and basically images like this. So I'm going to use this one as an example uh, because I just made it yesterday. So the first thing I do is go to PicMonkey and I have actually downloaded um, some really great backgrounds from Shutterstock. So I'm going to show you what I do. So I pick my background. And then to get Chelsea on the background, I just click this little butterfly image. And you could add a bunch of different stickers uh, and all kinds of shapes and things like that. But right now I'm going to add my own image. So I've downloaded a picture of her. And she's got this really, really great picture. So I'm going to make it the size I, I need it and position it. And then, this is like my favorite feature on PicMonkey. Go to your eraser, and I like to make it big, bigger than that. And then you could just erase this background. And this does take some like skill and basically practice. So I just do like the big edges, and then to get closer, what I do is I make, you know, the eraser small, but I make the hardness very light. Um, so that way I can get close without having to pay too much attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Now, as you get in there, you know, to remove the background, you could actually just zoom in so that you could really see what you're doing and really get detail. I think the key to this is really picking a background that you don't have to get crazy on, you know, edging it super well. So, for example, if I just edge her arm like this, that looks all right because it kind of blends into the background. But I'm just going to show you an example. If I add, you know, a black background behind her, then you can really see all of the edges. So there you would have to get more detailed. So I just simply pick something where it kind of just blends in. You can't even see that one white spot. Okay, so let's just pretend like I've completely done this so I don't have to take the time to go through it. And once you get your image on here, you know, right now I can move it around uh, all I want. And if I did that, I would have to erase more of this background. But let's just say you get it on here and you position it where you want. If you're sure that that's where you want it and you're done editing it, you can do this really cool thing where you click this button and it combines it. So now I can no longer move it. The benefit of that is when you start adding text and things like that, um, you know, you don't have to like mess around with clicking the right thing. But I'm going to undo that because I still have some more stuff to add. So in my original picture over here, you can see I have this white background, this white little banner. So all I did was I created a rectangle, click on it, send to the back, I made it white, and then I faded a, a little bit so that it, you know, you could see a little bit of the background. And then duplicate, and then I did one here and I made it small just to give it more interest. And I duplicated that so it's like the same size. And I want to send these to the back. The next thing I did was I came over here and I added a banner. So I picked this one, made it super big. Okay, not that big. <laughs> and then you can pick the color you want it to be. So kind of went with like a mint green color and there's a really cool feature on here let's just say I wanted to make something else this same exact color um, for example if I wanted to make this the same color I would click this little color spot and then I could match the color but I didn't want to do that because then I would have to get super detailed on um, getting the white out of the background on Chelsea. 
Okay, so then what you can do is you can add text. And I like to play around with different fonts. So one of my favorite fonts right now is this one, this delicious cake one. So I just typed in her name. And then, you know, resize your image, however big you want it. And I wanted to just make it a little bit more visually interesting. So I changed the font of her name. I want to say it was this. And then I actually just made this smaller than the rest of the font. So then here you can see it's 205. So then you can just type in the same size so it's consistent. And I put a couple spaces. Okay, not exact, but you get the idea. Okay, so now I don't need to put anything else behind her. So the easiest thing for me to do is to see how I'm clicking and it's highlighting this box and I might not want that. Um, now I can combine my images. So now everything, if I click on it, nothing happens. Now I added, I wanted to make a little pop of color. So I actually added this image and I had to get rid of the background on here. So let's just say it's about that big. So then I just went in with that eraser again and I just, you know, went around the edges and then I zoomed in and I got, made it a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner. Once you get some practice with this, it really goes by pretty quickly, but when you start, it takes, it takes a lot to get used to. So anyway, let's just pretend like that's perfect. And then I added my text. So I want to say this was this one. <clears throat> Oops, typo. Made it white, and then I didn't like how stark that was against here. So I just faded it a little bit. Again, one of my favorite features. So it kind of looks a little bit older and fits in with the sign. And then for this little... Um, sticker, I just went to this feature and I want to say somewhere down here. Honestly, I really just play around with this a lot. I just click things and, you know, see what looks good. So then for this to make it the way that I wanted it, I had to rotate it and then on the overlay, I had to mirror it. And however I did that, oh, there we go. I got it to work and then I just added, you know, that last text. So anyway, that's a quick tutorial for you guys on how I do some of my images. I hope that helps.